What is up, team? Welcome back to the Red Storm Rapid Reaction Podcast. I'm Pat Kane. Today I'm going to do a real quick preview for St. John's next game tomorrow against UConn. UConn, of course, comes in ranking the top 10 in the AP poll off a loss to Xavier, three losses in their last five games. Um, so not the hottest stretch of basketball for them, but you know, the Big East is a bear and they're, you know, finding out quickly it's not easy to win on the road in tough places. Um, St. John's will have to do just that tomorrow if they want to sneak away with a victory. But nonetheless, uh, they have had some success there so far with Coach Anderson. Lost a tough one there last year and won the year prior, although this is by far the best UConn team we have seen. So it'll be a, a good test for St. John's, who has been playing a little bit better of late. Let's take a look at team comparison right here. Uh, as I said, uh, UConn has lost three of five. Most recently, I'm sorry, was a loss at Marquette. I'm thinking uh, I got confused. They, they lost to Xavier to, to start their skid, uh, followed that off with a loss at Providence. Their most recent loss was a loss at Marquette where they gave up uh, 82 points. And that's a lot of points for them to give up. UConn comes into this uh, game averaging or giving up just 62.6 points a game, and they have the highest rated defense in the Big East. And that's for a team who, you know, doesn't play at a snail's pace. They've got the, the sixth best tempo in the Big East. So unlike Butler and Seton Hall, who we have seen, who have stout defenses as well, uh, UConn likes to get up and down a little bit too. So that defense is, is even more impressive. St. John's coming off a win versus Butler, a Butler team who got a win over Nova last night. Um, that was the first win we had in, in six games, coming off a five-game losing streak prior to that. But we had showed signs in the, the game at Providence. And that Providence road game is the only um, same matchup that these two teams have seen so far in Big East play in terms of opponent and venue. Uh, the only real true comparison we can make. And they both came up with losses. St. John's actually, you know, held it to a three-point game while UConn got beat by double digits. Doesn't mean anything in terms of who's a better team, just, you know, one uh, opponent to compare. Um, you know, if we think about the game last year, the one that we could have snuck away with a win, but we did not, uh, we still have nightmares about all the block shots we had. So you see up there highlighted as the blocks. UConn averages over five blocks a game. They're big man. So no going Clinigan, um, Clegane, uh, do a great job protecting the rim and, uh, just as Dylan Wusu. So it'll be interesting to see how well we are attacking and scoring inside against UConn this go around. Uh, let's take a look at some of their players. Obviously, they're led by Sonogo. Sonogo, um, Adamo Sonogo is a fantastic player. In my opinion, he's the, he's the best player in the Big East. He's got an unbelievable motor. Um, you know, it goes without saying that in order to beat UConn, you got to be able to handle him somewhat. You can't let him, you know, run a mess on your on your defense and, and score 20-plus uh, points and grab 10-plus rebounds. Um, hold, hold him to his averages, and you've done a pretty good job. Um, I'm more worried, honestly, about their two guards, Hawkins and Newton, both 6'5 guards, both guys who can put it on the floor and can shoot from the perimeter. Um, it will be a, a tall task for our shorter backcourt to hang with those guys. But I think, uh, you know, we're up for the challenge. And if we, if we want to beat UConn, we're going to have to hold those guys under their averages and especially um, force tough shots from the perimeter. Another guy off the bench you got to worry about, speaking of shooters, Joey Calcaterra, a fifth-year transfer, shooting 44% from three. He has the uh, capability of really getting hot from distance, lighting it up, also making some plays on the floor. And their one player who everyone seems to love, who is not uh, a real shooting threat, Andre Jackson, junior out of New York. Um, he is an extremely good athlete, a very talented passer, good all-around player, not a guy who has shown the consistent ability to be able to beat you from deep. He has shot slightly better in Big East play, uh, making close to 33% in the six games they've played in conference. But on the year, he has not shown to be a good three-point shooter, nor has he shown that ability in his previous two seasons. So, you know, interesting to see how we come on and play him, hopefully give him some space, make him beat us from the perimeter, while forcing those other guys, Hawkins and Newton, to put the ball on the deck. And then, of course, you got to worry about Sonogo and – um, Clegane, when he comes in for him off the bench, um, Clegane is a monster, 7'2", can move pretty well, uh, kind of like a baby Zach Eady. I mean, just takes up space, posts up in the middle of the, in the paint, and uh, can finish really well, shooting about 70% on the year. And that's, you know, with teams knowing who he is at this point. Um, let's talk about some of my keys I think we'll have to handle to win this game. 
Rapid reaction, three-point play to win. How's that for branding? All right, step one, take one away. Uh, I think we've got to make a decision. Are we going to take away Sonogo and Clegane, or are we going to take away the perimeter? We can't let both those things beat us, and it's got to be one or the other. So are we going to wall up on the perimeter and play one-on-one in the middle? Hopefully Soriano can handle himself, or are we going to send two, double in the post, um, you know, collapse, make him kick it out, and then hopefully, you know, don't get killed from distance. But we got to choose one of those and do one well. Uh, second point, uh, foul trouble in the free throw line. We have to make sure Soriano especially stays out of foul trouble, which is a hard task against Sonogo and Clegane and UConn Bunch that plays extremely physical. But if we're going to have a chance in the middle against those two monsters, we need Soriano to play as many minutes as possible. And, of course, to do that, he'll have to stay out of foul trouble. On the other end, we got to get to the free throw line. We got to make sure that we are attacking, um, getting those bigs in foul trouble if they're going to try to protect the rim. Last year, they blocked too many of your shots and we didn't get to the line enough. We got to make them pay for trying to block shots. We got to make them pay when you get to the paint. And if it does get to the point where we're attacking, 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 can't get shots off, we've got to adjust and take some shots further away from the basket. But you got to start off attacking. Hopefully, you get one of those two bigs in foul trouble and hopefully, you get some easy, bus- easy baskets uh, in the meantime. And lastly, transition defense. In games where we've struggled defensively, and even games, you know, where we've had you know good stretches, we are getting beat going back on defense. Okay, other wings are running the court. We're getting lost in translation and transition, or we're just lolly lollygagging back on defense. And we're giving up too many easy baskets, even on made baskets of our own. We've seen it far too often. UConn as a team, Jackson and those guards can really run the court, get it and go when they do cho- choose to do so. And uh, Sonogo is an excellent athlete, can trail behind for threes. He's, he's been making uh, 40% of threes in Big East play. So he's not a guy you can leave open from the perimeter and he can kill you in transition. All right. So we got to take one away, either the bigs or the perimeter. We got to work to not get in foul trouble on defense and work to get the free throw line on offense. And we got to get back on transition defense. We do those three things. And I think we'll have a chance to beat UConn, at least hang in the game. All right. And if we can keep this game, you know, five, eight points and have a chance at the end that'll be a good performance obviously you know st john's can't afford to be happy with moral victories but we're playing a top 10 top 10 team on the road you're not expected to come away with a victory but this type of type of victory is a type of victory that could turn our season around all right not expecting it but hoping it um hope you guys tune in sunday i'm going to be doing a live watch along like i did with the providence game you guys feel free to join in the chat or ask to come right on the screen and talk uh talk some hoops with me uh, we'll either get that going during halftime, you know, the live chat when guys come on stream with me or, you know, we can do it, do it throughout some of the game as well, depending on how the game goes. But I appreciate those those guys who joined last game. Hopefully we get some more this time. Um, all thoughts and opinions are welcome. Just got to keep it civil. Um, but thank you guys for tuning in. Thanks for listening on YouTube or the podcast. Uh, hopefully we can take care of UConn tomorrow. If not, I'll still be here giving a recap, still be doing the live watch along. For Eugene Lawrence, this has been Pat Kane, Red Storm Rapid Reaction Podcast. Peace.